Hang on. Okay, now I have to catch my breath. <laughs> Woo! Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trisha, if we haven't met, and if we have met, welcome back. This is my kitchen-ish. We're in the dining area. It's a Monday. It's Halloween, actually. Happy Halloween to you, even though you'll see this later. I have been <laughs> going through my house, cleaning up projects that are 99% done, finishing that 1%. I've been picking up messes, basically, and braiding braids that are in my shop. So, um, I've been kind of running around this morning and this weekend, this past weekend, I was planning on doing, working on a project that I didn't get to at all. Uh, something I did get to is I have been hemming the most recent set of dish towels that came off my loom. I'm gonna come in close so you can actually see the cool pattern. Uh, this one's red. They are a bunch of different colors. I made several navy because like every kid, almost every kid in our family likes has navy in their house. So I thought I would offer that they could have uh, towels if they want them. Maybe they won't. I don't know. Going to uh, work on warping my loom with my next warp. It's wound. So I'm gonna show you. I wound it like back in, I think July. It was ages ago. It may have even been spring, I'm not sure. And it has a rainbow in it, but also black, white, and gray. It's, um, I was gonna say it's similar, but it's not. I, I did a set of rainbow towels before. This one's gonna be way different. I probably will do a set of those rainbow ones again eventually because I love how those turned out and they were gone in like a hot second and I, I need some more. But not yet. And um, I wound it in three sections. This is I think a 400 end warp. I'm pretty sure it's 400. So I do um, and it's supposed to be 20 inches. So what I do is a seven, a seven, and a six. Uh, it might be seven, six, seven, whatever. That's how I do it when I wind it on my warping mill. I recently bought a um, sectional warp beam for my loom, but I wanna weave this warp first because it's a 10 yard warp and it took forever to, to wind and I really wanna make sure that I use it before I switch to the sectional warp and then we're gonna be on a totally different warping journey. <laughs> Cause you know, I just can't be happy with what I am doing. I literally ordered it um, after I warped the last warp and that warp was the first time I felt really like this is awesome. Uh, every time before that I've had problems with my warps. So not so many problems that I couldn't finish them, but problems. So I, I wound this one. I'm going to use a method that I learned from YouTube videos that were made by Amy at the Woolery. I don't know her last name, but I'm going to link the first video and I'm just going to go through the steps. If you want explanations from her, watch those videos because you know i'm new at this it's only my second time the first time i started filming and then i got so involved in my brain with the new process i just stopped turning on my camera and so i didn't show it to you because you would have only literally seen like the first one or two steps literally since the first time i started warping because i already had a, a pretty decent eh, amount of experience with a rigid head of loom I mean, it depends on who you ask if I had a decent amount. A couple of years of weaving on a rigid head of loom. The reason why I tried this in the first place is because I started weaving with a rigid, rigid, rigid head of loom. And when you use a rigid head of loom, just in case you don't know, you use your um, reed as a beater bar and your heddles. And I mean, it's like a whole bunch of pieces of the puzzle but also when you're warping your reed or your they call it a heddle um separates the strand so you thread your heddle and then you wind onto your back beam and that spaces your threads out exactly the way you're going to weave them when they come back through so in my mind when i started warping i was like i have this sweet 
read, right? That perfectly spaces out my threads in my warp. Why am I not using this somehow to actually warp the loom? to space them out during the warping process. You do that with a rigid heddle, why am I not doing that? So I kept thinking about it and I was like, okay, so it won't work because if you wind it onto the back, you have to have a place for the least sticks and then also you need to like re-thread through the heddles and come back and I was like, it won't work if you do it that way. But I started Googling around, I'm like, there has to be a way, there has to be a way. And I kept trying to figure it out and I couldn't. So I um, was searching for a way to use my read to do the spacing and I found the series of videos that Amy did and I was like, this is what I'm trying to do. I just couldn't figure it out. All you do, and I'm actually gonna point you guys down and just um, take you through the steps, but I would encourage you, like don't use this for your tutorial, use her set of videos because she explains things better. This is only my second time, so she has tons of experience, but this is what I'm doing. You guys are on my fiber journey, whether you like it or not. <laughs> I mean, I assume you like it because you keep coming back, right? But I am gonna film while I'm doing it and we're gonna go through the process. I'm probably gonna have to check the videos again because again, this is only my second time and the last time I did it was a couple of months ago. I'm gonna point you down at what I'm working on and let's do this. It's time, it's super time for me to warp it. Plus, I really need to get these done and um, off my loom, woven up, so that I can start Christmas towels. It is, like I said, it's Halloween, so it's like, this is time sensitive. Of course, because that's how I roll, so let's do it. I will link to these at the Woolery, you can get them there. I'm gonna take my Lee sticks, oh yeah, and I'm gonna actually move you back a little. I need a dowel. This dowel is the same length as my apron rod, so I need that dowel. And my lee sticks are gonna go back here on this little shelf. Those are the things I need, plus I need my warp. And you do need a heddle hook. The first thing I need to do is put my lee sticks through my crosses in order on my warp. So next, what I wanna do is I'm gonna tie these Lee sticks together, but I wanna leave a space. I want it to be, I don't know, that's probably a half inch maybe. So I do wanna leave a space between the sticks and I'm gonna use my favorite linen cord for this. There's a million ways to do this and there's no right or wrong. If you put it on, oh, that one broke, nice. Put it on, run it underneath. Watch me break another one. Okay, that will hold it on there. And then if I'm pulling and putting pressure on this, they're stuck to the shelf and that's what I want. If you wanna be 100% secure, and I, I guess I really kinda do, you can tie these together. If you tie them together, literally nothing can come off. So I'm gonna do that really fast. I just feel better when I do it. So where this cross is, right in the center, I will untie this and it will cross between every inch of threads. So I need to start over here. And then I have to untie the end which is another one of those bright green yarns. Okay. 
All right, good. So that's ready to warp. You can see better on here, actually. If I spread this out, you can see that each inch is separated by a cross in that green thread. See that? So I want to untie it, but I'm only going to take the first inch out of there. I want this to run through so it's out of the way. So that frees my first inch of warp. And I'm gonna actually pull it up over so I can see what's going on a little bit better. If I pull a little bit, see how that straightens those right out and I can see exactly how they need to lay down because that cross is keeping them in order. So I can see my very first thread is this one. I have marked on my heddle where I want to start. So what I'm going to start doing is just pulling these through. So I'm almost done. I have just these left to go, this little clump left to go and um i was like two-thirds of the way through doing this on the first read and then i remembered that uh before i started winding this warp i had had a conversation with shannon from sunrise lodge uh fiber arts i think it's called anyway that's where you can find her on instagram and i was asking her questions because i didn't like the set on the weave that I had on my loom. Basically, I was like, hey, should I have done 24 inch per inch when I did 20? And we kind of agreed that I should have. So I had set this warp up for 24 ends per inch and I was using a heddle. Well, I was using a reed for 20 ends per inch. I didn't have them spaced correctly. I might have tried to like squeeze them together a little bit here and there, except I do have a 12. So I actually got the correct reed, brought it over here, moved everything from the other reed to this one. So it's like taking me almost all day to do this. Last time I did this, it was maybe a three hour thing. So don't let that bother you. And actually, when I did this last time, which was my very first time, the rest of the process went much more easy and smooth than, uh, than like this part. So I'm really not worried. I just need to get it right. And it needs to be right because uh, that's gonna make every step easier. So I'm just gonna finish this up, then we'll take it to the loom. I don't think that's gonna be today. It might be tonight though. I guess we'll have to see what happens. There's so much going on right now. It's wild. So it's all threaded. I just need to take it to the loom. So I'm gonna put all the warp chains in this bag, just so they're not sitting on the floor. It's really not a huge deal if they do, but you know, you guys know I never vacuum, so I'm kidding, I totally vacuum. Okay, now I'm just gonna lift my dowel up on my reed. I'm gonna take my lee sticks tied together also on my reed. Grab my bag of the warp chain and take this to the loom. This is the part you're gonna think is nuts. So the um, shafts, the heddle frames that hang on my loom, I have actually flipped them up and over so they're just completely out of the way until we're gonna thread heddles. Um, I did that because this is a warp that is the full width of my loom right here. So I would have had to take off the heddles or they would obstruct having it go through and wind on really smoothly. And I was like, 
why don't I just move those? On my loom, it's easy because they literally just hang and then go up and down with the treadles. So I just flipped them up and I tied them so that I can't accidentally knock them down. That's just gonna get them out of my way. That's not something you can do all the time. But just in case you guys are wondering, like, what did she do with that? <laughs> that's why that's up there. All right, I did film this, but I'm gonna actually talk about it. So Amy does something a little bit different. My back apron beam is not meant to like come out and come back in. So I actually just tied my dowel that I put my warp on to it the way that I always have. So it's tied in three places. You can see right here. Um, and there's just like a little space in between she actually transfers the warp onto the stick on her back beam but i have a different kind of loop so i have to do something a little different Okay, so I just basically transferred all the threads from the lee stick that's up front and onto one that's right here. I'm gonna lift this one and make sure I have every single string And I can see that I got every single... She explains it in her video, but I'm going to tell you what I just did. So the reason I did that is because if you've ever done this type of warp, you will see a lot of times the tangles and the hangups happen right in between these two leaf sticks because they're crossing each other and they're like rubbing up against the other threads. They're pulling lint off each other and they're like binding themselves to each other. It's really frustrating. So what she does that I never thought of and it's genius is she moves her cross farther apart. So basically she replaces this lee stick. You can use anything. I have two sets so I just put one in on the other side. She lifts each of these threads in sections and makes sure she just threads the new one through on the absolute other side of the reed. So it works so well, you guys. I'm like blown away by this. All right, so we replaced 
this front leaf stick, so I'm gonna untie them from each other. You have to keep the back one. Don't let anything happen to the back one. Like I said, losing the cross. Oh, I just pulled the wrong one, hang on. Losing the cross is like a nightmare. We're gonna take out the one we replaced, which was the front one. Okay. And then I'm gonna retie this back one to the loom because I do not want to lose it. So now I still have my cross, but my front lease stick is way on the back of the loom. And you guys, this makes it so much easier. Thank you. 
Okay, that took forever. Even if it took forever, I did it. I'm just gonna cut the ends open. I'm gonna knot these. I don't wanna lose the cross. I know I've said it like three times, but it like, <laughs> I can't stress it enough. You need your cross for when you thread your heddles. So I am going to move this Lee stick. Well, actually I'm going to replace it on the other side so I have my cross. Okay, I needed a new battery. So I have to do kind of a similar thing To when I move one from the other the front to the back of the loom it's this one right here you can see it on that end now I need to move the other stick to the back I basically can just do the same thing so lifting the strings up on top of that one so now they're both in I need to tie them together and I am not going to take this one out over here in the back. I will not take this out until these two are secured together and they cannot go anywhere. Now you can see these are tied together in a figure eight. They are tied together at the other end in a figure eight. So I can take out the one in the front. It's always scary to take out a leaf stick for any reason. <laughs> All right, so the next thing for me to do is I'll move up my cross and start threading my heddles, but first I need to put my, um, my shafts back down. The lee sticks are tied up here so that I can see them and reach them right over um, my shafts, that's just how I like it. There's many ways to do this. I've seen quite a few now and you know, I, for me, none of them are like super amazing and none of them are like super horrible. So this is just what I found I like. They're actually tied right here and they're tied to what would be the back stick because I like to be able to see all the strands on both sticks and that way they hang down like this and I'll just pluck them off there and I will thread my heddles. This is a like plain one, two, three, four warp all the way across so that I can do twill and plain weave. So I just hit the spot where I snapped that blue thread. I found it cause I've been counting to make sure every count of the different colors is correct. So I wound off, this is about 12 yards. The warp is 10 yards, but I figured I always want to make sure I have, you know, a little extra. So I wound this off of the correct blue and I'm going to drop it in one of my yarn bowls so that it doesn't get, you know, kicked around and it can't go all over and get tangled up and all that stuff and just set it on the floor. And I'm gonna run the end through the heddles to make sure that my heddles are threaded correctly by color, if that makes sense. Cause like, if I come back later and find out I only have 13 threads in my blue stripe when I should have had 14, my heddles will all be off. So I'm gonna add it right now. And then while I'm weaving, what I actually do to put tension on it, cause it's just that little ball, is I use one of these little clips and I just hang it off that one thread that is added and then I hang this washer which is tied to a little hook 
I hang this washer off of it to put tension on it to keep it in the warp. And then as I advance my warp, I do have to move the little hooky thing down as I go, but it works really well. It's not my favorite thing, but it, you know, these things happen where you snap a warp thread once in a while and it's like, what do I do? This is what I do. So I'm adding it right now. I'm not gonna wait it though until I start actually weaving. So for now, I am just gonna run it through. Well, actually I'll put it up. Yeah, I'll run it through here and I'll pick it up on the other side and put it through the correct heddle and then I'll just keep going. And as I go, like I said, I check and make sure I have the correct number of colored threads in each batch because I do think I may have snapped a gray one somewhere. Uh, so far I haven't found it. So I am Slade, my Rita Slade, it is uh, 24 ends per inch. This is 8-2 cotton. I know someone will ask me. And um, I was just looking for a shuttle I can throw a few times to go ahead and like check out how the tension is on this warp. I guess we're just gonna see how we did. 